I will now perform a safe start. My transmission is in neutral. My brakes are engaged. I will turn the key on, cycle the gauges. My ABS and my trailer ABS light have both come on and went off. All the other lights have come on and went off as they should. Push in the clutch. Okay. The seat belt, not frayed, damaged, in good condition, latches, and latches as it should. My mirrors, clean, free of debris, no illegal stickers, and adjusted to me. My windshield is properly mounted and secured. No illegal stickers or other obstructions. It is clean. My windshield wipers work properly. And my washer fluid squirts and works properly. My defrost and my heater both work properly. My steering wheel has no excessive play. My city horn and highway horn both work properly. My left turn signal indicator, my right turn signal indicator, my four-way flasher indicators, and my high beam indicator all work properly. My water temperature will slowly rise to an operating range between 170 and 200 degrees. My def tank must have at least two bars or an eighth of a tank. My oil pressure should be between 30 and 80 psi. My voltmeter should be between 12.5 and 14.5 volts. My primary and secondary air tanks will slowly rise till the governor kicks out at 140 psi and the governor will kick back in at 100 psi. In my side box, I have a properly mounted and charged fire extinguisher, three emergency flashers, extra fuses, and extra breakers. What did I miss? You know, I was just listening. I wasn't <laughs> scrutinizing you on the, on the verbiage. Oh, all right. Now, I need to get out and check all my lights. So I will turn on my toy flashers and my high beams. I'll get out and make sure that they work. Walk around the vehicle, make sure they all work. Then you get back in, cancel the four ways and the high beams. You'll do the left turn signal and then the right turn signal. Get out and check each of those. It is possible that she will help you check them, but you need to physically get out. Yeah, well, I've seen her. I'm not supposed to watch me. Don't worry. <laughs> uh, all of, so you get out and check all your lights and then when you get back in you say if I didn't have someone that I trust to push on the brake I would back up to a reflective surface to check my brake lights and that is the first part of the intake. then we do the brake tests so I'm going to Yeah. So when you first do your brakes, wait for everything to release like that. Otherwise, you'd be dragging your trailer tires or something like that. It's the first time you fill everything up. It takes a while. Like the, the airbags and all that fill, and then those trailer brakes are the last thing to release. So a lot of guys drag them. Get in, hit the buttons, and go. I'll give everyone a chance. All right. So I'm going to pull against my trailer brake, make sure that it works. Then I'm going to release my trailer brake, pull against.
against my tractor emergency brake. Make sure that it is holding. And I will release both, both brakes and accelerate to up to five miles an hour. And apply my service brake. Making sure that everything stops evenly and it doesn't pull to one side or the other, which could indicate a problem with my suspension, tire pressure, or an unbalanced load. So all my brakes passed. There's so three parts of the end gap. Your dash, all that stuff, then your brake test, and now the last part is the sail test. I'm going to let the air build up to a full tank. it up a little bit. Okay. I must fall asleep. So you have to wait till the governor kicks out so you have a full tank of air to start your sail test. transmission will hold me when I release my brakes. I'll shut off the engine, cycle the key so the gauges come back on but I don't start it. For the static portion of the sail test I will release both my brakes ensuring that our transmission will hold us in place. Wait for my gauges to settle. Once the gauges have settled, I will start a one minute timer. We cannot lose more than two pounds of air for a straight truck or three pounds of air for a combination vehicle, which this is. Feel free to make conversation with the tester during this time. Crack a joke, whatever. Yeah. Okay. So the one minute is up. We did not lose any air. It has passed the static portion of the test. Next, I will do the applied test where I will push on the brake pedal for 90 PSI or as hard as I can for one minute. After the gauges settle, start my timer. We cannot lose more than three pounds of air for a straight truck or four pounds of air for a combination vehicle, which this is.
not lose any air. The applied test has passed. Next, I will do the low air pressure test. I will feather the brakes until my audible and visible alarms come on before 55 PSI. My audible and visual alarms have both come on before 55 PSI. This test has passed. Next is my emergency brake test. I will continue to pump the brakes until both my brakes pop out. It must be before 20 PSI. Okay, well, both my bulbs have popped out. It was before 20 PSI, that test has passed. Now up until this point, you can go back to any part of the pre-trip and mention something you may have forgotten and then remembered. And then you'll say this combination vehicle has passed all of its pre-trip inspections and should be safe to drive. And then you'll want to perform a safe start to rebuild your air. Any questions? You thought you had a lot to remember outside? Yeah.